of course, she has achieved some things, largely the ideological crusade she, she set out uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to accomplish, you know, the woke policy, if you like, particularly in the field of, of uh, Maori, of Maori relations and uh, Maori empowerment. Can you begin to explain to me where the country is at on that? Yeah, I would be hesitant to explain that to you, at least not without um, a foreword, because I want to just clarify that I never regarded myself as racist. <laughs> and the other thing is, of course, since you mentioned I come from Germany, and of course you could never tell from my accent, um, I'm very hesitant to enter these race debates. <laughs> so from my experience, whenever you live in a foreign country, there are some debates that you rather leave to the locals because they are just too sensitive for you to engage in as a recently arrived foreigner. I mean, you've probably had the same experience when you moved to Australia, same here. So I try to stay out of that. But the problem is these days, there is practically no policy in New Zealand left where there isn't some race component attached to it. So reluctantly, I'm getting into that. I should also say, of course, I think of myself as a non-racist. I'm a classical liberal. I believe in equal rights for everybody. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what the color of your skin is. Um, that's basically where I'm coming from. So with that forward, what is the government doing? Well, basically, we have a government now where about a quarter of the Labour caucus belongs to the Maori caucus. And they have some very specific ideas on how they would like to reform policymaking in this country. And it's basically along racial lines. So separate rights, special rights, um, privileges, if you like, for one group of the population, which comprises around about 15% of all New Zealanders, and then different rules um, and different uh, ideas and different policies for the remaining 85%. And so what we're getting, for example, is now a separate Maori health authority. So this country now has two health systems. It has one for Maori and one for one Maori. We have another um, development that we could see last week. So there is Environment Canterbury. That's the regional council of the Canterbury region, so the area around Christchurch. And since last week, we have two councillors that are not elected councillors, but councillors appointed by the Iwi, so by the Maori tribe of the area. And so it is basically giving Maori an extra vote on the council, well, two extra votes, while also, of course, allowing Maori still to vote. So if you're Maori, if you're living in Canterbury, you can vote for the general council. And on top of that, you can also appoint two extra councillors with full voting rights. So I would say, actually, from a democratic principles background, you would say this is not fair because typically we have one person, one vote. Well, except in the case of Canterbury. And this is the kind of policy now that Labour wants to roll out across the whole country. So we will see that now in Rotorua probably next. And um, basically it adds a racial component to every aspect of public policy, whether you like it or not. Another area, water. So New Zealand councils built up water infrastructure. So for sewage, for fresh water, for storm water, all of this was built, of course, after the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in 1840. So ratepayers have paid for this over generations. Now Labour comes along, effectively confiscates it from councils and then puts a governance structure in place where 50% of voting rights in governance of these entities will rest with tribes. Well, again, this is not quite my understanding of local democracy, and I think it is deeply unfair to ratepayers who've paid for this infrastructure, you know, billions of dollars over more than 160 years, or actually 180 years almost. So really, where New Zealand is heading with this is into a very, very dangerous um, set of circumstances that remind one more of apartheid regimes, where there are separate rights for separate groups of people, but it's moving us further away from the old British democratic ideal of one person, one vote.